and welcome to Wise Up On Air Hands On. I'm Damian Kaspauer, product manager here at Audio Kinetic, uh, working on Wise, joined by Chase Steele. Chase, what's happening? Hey, uh, we're here today to talk about quadcopters. So that should be pretty uh, pretty exciting, um, you know, pretty narrowly focused collection. So we dive in and look at all the different recordings that we have for these various sizes. So there's quite a range. So um, it's cool to see the difference between, you know, the three inch, which is the smallest, and the uh, the nine inch. And uh, so some information, actually, because I wasn't sure about this at first either. Well, and the high level was... overview is that we're just going to go deep into this, yeah. get our hands on in Reaper. And then you've done some cool implementation over on Unreal. You get to fly one around virtually. Uh, yeah. And we'll circle back at the end and talk about how you can get your hands on Strata. And meanwhile, yeah, Sound X Machina. That's the folks who are bringing this collection to Strata. Yes. So this is a new partner. So it's their first collection with Strata. So um, it's cool to have more partners coming on board to bring new collections. And this is a, you know, each one has been bringing something unique so far. And this is another great example of that, I would say. Yeah, exactly. Like very focused, very specific collection from these folks. And that's just what we're going to continue to do is build on over 40 collections now as part of that strata subscription continuing to get different slices uh into people's workspaces so they can build outward facing and we actually have a, a great blog up on the audio kinetic blog that talks about you know how the collection came to life uh different acts aspects of it that you can dig into <laughs> offline after the live stream so definitely dig in there at the ak blog uh, at audiokinetic.com to read more about it while we go hands on starting now let's go all right cool so we should see i have the uh the main project window open in reaper for for quadcopters yeah it looks great yeah uh, so and we give me have a quick rundown again of of what we're looking at. We've got Reaper up. We got tracks on the left. We're seeing regions and markers in the middle and then the region manager on the right hand side. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So, uh, you know, it's always worth mentioning this region manager. Uh, it's, you know, if you're if you're using Strata, or if you're about to go check out the uh, the sample collections that we have available, you'll want to have this uh, region manager open. It's it, it's really designed with using it in mind. Um, so what you'll have in here is the actual Reaper sub projects, which are always on this top track, this top track here, and then underneath are the uh, the rendered outputs from the project of this of the sounds inside that contains all the layers so it's every, all the layers are baked into these uh rendered previews right because strata comes with both the rendered uh you know the rendered output of all of the multi-track compositions yeah. along with those compositional elements so all the tiny little bits and pieces that we'll be pouring over today yeah so it's good flexibility if you if you already like the uh you know, the, the sound that you're hearing and you don't feel like you want to go all the way in depth to to altering the multi-track stuff, then you can just, you know, you can kind of live in this main project window for, for certain things. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So it, one thing that I, I generally will do if I'm trying to, as you can see, there's a lot here, obviously, Um. to quickly find the project files, you can, you know, just type in RPP. And then that you can see it brings up all those, so you can navigate the window without having to actually zoom in or out. If you don't, uh, you know, if there's a lot of projects in here, that's also a helpful tip. 
Right. But, and so what we're seeing is these different individual sub projects that are the different size copters. Yes. So we have, uh, we have, I guess it's five. Yeah. Five different quadcopters. They're all just, uh, you know, go from small to large, so three inch all the way up to nine inch, which, um, I had to look this up and I, I looked it up when I was making the, uh, the promotion video for it. Uh, I think it has to do with the frame size is what is what that's referring to in terms of the measurement. Um, <clears throat> it's either the frame or the something with the blades. It was actually not as straightforward as I <laughs> thought it was, but either way, um, you know, we're going from small to larger and uh, the larger quadcopters have some um, some additional sounds in them that you wouldn't actually have in the smaller ones. So if you're thinking about how much variation is there actually between all these other than the, you know, the tonality, you know, there are some, uh, there are some different kind of functions between the smaller and the larger ones, I would say. Great. Yeah. Great. I can't wait to dig into those layers. Yeah. So we can, st we can get in here and start with uh, the three inch and I'll just move all the way up and uh, you can quickly hear some of them. So here we are inside of the, uh, the three inch project and everything is uh, broken out into this basic layer. You have all the actions that essentially cover the, uh, the quadcopters prop. So you have start hover loop. So it's a seamless loop, which is, you know, great. Obviously uh, many of these collections are designed for use inside of uh, inside of a game game engine or wise. So, you, any loops that are going to be present are always going to be seamless and ready to plug in. You have to fiddle around with those. Um, and then there's some maneuver sounds, some stop sounds, and then some flybys. So we can go, kind of go through these, and then I'll talk about some of these additional layers uh, after after we go through just listening to some of these quickly, I it's, guess. It's great. And I know we'll end up in Unreal flying around a quadcopter that you've implemented. And I will talk more about how you were able to just take this content from Strata, put it directly in and and have it uh, have it working with with interactivity uh, when we get there. Yeah, yeah, it worked out uh, pretty well. Um, all the ideas that I had, this was really conducive to, you know, producing those. Um, one thing I think I was mentioning to you before we started, but um, with vehicles, sometimes, you know, this is my personal feeling that you're recording vehicles. It can be sometimes difficult to discriminate, like what what material should you record? What should you keep? Um, how much is too much? Because, you know, there's sometimes can be uh, an infinite number of things. You could break this recording out in a lot of different ways, but everything is done in a way where the whole vehicle is covered and pretty much any action that you needed to have it do, whether it's in a game or other context, um, it's not really, it's, it's not a struggle to figure out how to implement these sounds. It's really, um, it's, it's really organized in a nice way. So it's worth taking note of, you know, for, uh, for future circumstances with vehicle recording, I would say. So cool. All right. I can get in here and let's we'll just go through uh listen to the start first and I'll just go through them sequentially. So good to go. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Fired up. So the start sounds over here. And a lot there's a good amount of variation. So I think we have for most of the actions we have six variations. So I won't won't listen to all six, but some of them uh, some of the variations are shorter, some are longer, which is good, depending on what you're going to use it for. They don't make them all the same length, so you have good variety even within that subset of uh, variation. So here's the starts. Uh, listen to, here's one that looks a little shorter. Wow, right? those yeah. are stereo as heck. Uh, really cool the way that that 
uh, plays across the stereo field. Great, super clean, precise recordings. Nice. Yeah, they did some pretty interesting. Um, look like they did some pretty interesting recording techniques from the uh, from the marketing material that I saw. They, I think they in some cases had uh, microphones either attached i know they had like cameras attached to the actual quadcopters yeah so um yeah there was a lot of thought that went into how to capture it best too especially considering when you're out uh outside it was all done in a field so they're you know really clean um you know it sounds like they're in a studio or something it's great yeah so here's uh here's the loop which will you know we're not gonna let the whole loop go on but uh, hear how that sounds. All right. So it's really, it's nice. It's really consistent as far as like a looping sound of a quadcopter. That was kind of something, um, before I started listening to these, I was like, okay, how is this loop going to, how is it going to sound? Because there can be a lot of variance with trying to keep one of those things still, I know. Um, so they're, you know, it sounds like a loop. It doesn't sound all over the place. It's exactly what you would hope for in terms of its purpose. Um, now here, these are, these sounds are probably, I would say, the, the more dynamic, they're really interesting, are the maneuver sounds. So this is essentially you know, the sounds you're getting from the quadcopter turning or moving around sort of sharply in the uh, in the air. So these are pretty cool. Uh, and as you can see, like I have these zoomed in here, there's quite a variety of lengths. So you could choose to use the shorter ones if that suits you better, or you could use them all or whatever. So here's these. Uh, this one looks pretty different from the waveform. And then here's a longer one. Wow. So there's... Yeah, there's a good amount of material even within some of these actions. Like if you just wanted to catch like, you know, maybe the first part of this right here. Oh, I'm going to cut it down just for the heck of it. So if you need to make edits, there's it's 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 pretty obvious points of interest inside these uh, variations where you can isolate things. And, you know, I, I tailored that to uh, to maybe a possible need in like two seconds there. So you yeah. can see, you know, it's, uh, it's really conducive to getting creative. Yeah. And those, and, and... those deep moves, it, it, they're so polyphonic, right? And again, mm -hmm. throwing it back, like it's a quad copter, right? So there's four propellers always, you know, working together to stabilize, uh, the, uh, the engine, uh, or the, uh yeah the object yeah. and uh and you can hear them really clearly uh spread across that stereo field you know all four of them working together and it's so rich uh what about that uh layer at the bottom with those moves is there something interesting there yeah yeah so this layer at the bottom the additional layer um this is uh, muted by uh, by default when you open up the project, but basically this layer is kind of uh, demonstrating using the maneuvers in conjunction with the uh, the hovering loop that's up ah. here. I don't think it's the exact same loop. It might be slightly different, but in any case, if I were to un well, <clears throat> maybe I should open up. I can open up the enrage while we're talking about this. So. Uh, so you can see, I don't have it unmuted yet, but you can see that what Enrage has is it's actually has an envelope follower where the uh, maneuver sound is routed into this loop at, or in, into the Enrage plugin on this loop, and it'll automatically duck 
the uh, the loop whenever you know the volume envelope uh, triggers. So if you were going to use it with a loop, um, maybe something for I d ended up doing something in in wise it was similar. Cool. But if you were going to use this for something linear, they've already gone through. Um, you know, the task of setting you up something basic so that you can use these two together as you probably would because it's always going to be hovering. The maneuvers aren't just going to happen statically. Right. But I'll unmute this and then we can hear how that sounds. Now, let me make sure that's actually playing. Uh, interesting. Wonder, oh, maybe it's because, huh? It's well, definitely getting its uh message. Oh, this is a this is just one of those examples of a simple mistake on my part. I didn't turn the volume <laughs> slider up, so perfect. So that's just the loop, but you can hear it ducking underneath there, and then I'll turn the uh. Other one back on here. Yeah, that's uh, maybe great. That's not... You get the great interaction between them, right? Yeah. Because you've got these these uh, these moves happening alongside the the loop, and then you get movement when those two are interacting. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So cool. again, it's super, super helpful. If you're trying to prototype something, it gives you a good, uh, good focal point, you know, something to reach for if you're going to implement it. And, uh, otherwise it's really useful on its own for, uh, something linear. So that is good. Uh, there's also this cinematic layer, which can take on different meetings from one collection to another. It's just something to, generally add uh, a little bit more flair or a little bit more of a um, interesting design aspect. Sometimes it's, you know, to add uh, low frequency effects for things, but this one, it's just got these two different um, sort of effects. There's a distortion and then a B effect. Okay. And these are also set up with, uh, within range on here. So uh, let me see if generally we have uh routing yeah okay so yeah you see you can adjust <clears throat> the send to these effects as well if you wanted to and get you know varying amount of them so probably um you could have them both on there obviously but i'll just we'll hear one at a time maybe cool so let's put through or i'll mute the b one for now And then maybe I can adjust some things here. All right. It's definitely adding presence and proximity. Yeah. So obviously the distortion, it may be something that you uh, would, you know, likely want to tweak to your own taste. But it's our it's set up there, so you know you have a starting point, which is cool. Nice. And then let's check out the B effect. Get the let me get to one of these longer takes, maybe. And hold on, keep forgetting where the uh, actual. Bottom is. So that's oh, actually man, that one's cool. Really, yeah, it is really cool. Like if you were going for more of like a like a sci-fi sort of style for something, yeah, which is e easy to map to imagine with something like a quadcopter. Um, uh, let's see what kind of effects are actually going on here. So they have uh, some sort of resonator, um, a couple of different resonators, some gain reduction, and then some cl like a clipper on here. Cool and. You have some macros set up so that actually if you're, you know, let me go maybe to this loop since it's a bit longer. I can play around with them just a little. 
B. Zero that out. So cool. again, macros already set up routed to some of these different effects, which uh, you have a, uh, there's going to be a wise up on air coming up about Enrage, right? Exactly. We're in the planning yeah. stages. And for folks who are just waking up to Enrage, this is a plugin that includes a bunch of plugins. It comes with uh, the Strata Collection subscription and it does a ton of stuff uh, used across uh, the different collections to enhance things in a standardized way that is easy to grab and manipulate towards whatever creative goals you have. Uh, and yeah, we'll dig deeper into Enrage in a future episode, but we've also unpacked a bunch of that functionality over time. It's, uh, it's a really powerful... Yeah. Uh, sidekick for the strata collections yeah it's always um it's always a challenge you know when i'm doing the uh the collection videos because there's inevitably going to be something very interesting going on in enrage it's always a challenge to uh not not talk about that for uh 10 minutes all on its own because you can always there's so much time you could spend in here talking about the cool design things that are happening so yeah. Well, um, and from a linear perspective, grabbing that macro, automating it, and you know, timing it to something that you're seeing on the screen is is a really powerful way to extend what's there in the collection by default and really make it your own creatively. And I think we'll see when we get to your implementation over on Unreal, you know, getting real time, getting dynamic with what's happening in the game. Uh, you know, takes it to another level as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, okay, so I guess in the interest of time, let's kind of get into uh, some of the other sizes just so we can hear the difference. So um, just to have it fresh, here's this is the three inch and then we'll compare it to the five. Great. All right, three inch and then five inch. So here I'll go to the maneuvers real quick. It's actually very interesting how the uh, the maneuvers come out very differently from one to the next. So um, you could probably, in, in certain circumstances, you could intermingle a lot of these if you like the characteristic of one, you know, versus another. There's no reason you can't use both. Right. So, and then of course we have the same things going on here. It's the same um, effects, the distortion that we've heard already, and the same uh, ducking additional track is uh, is in all the projects. Um, let's see. Is there anything? Let me see if there's anything different from this to to three to five. We have okay. So there is an acceleration layer that's in here. Get over to that. So those are kind of like isolated portions of a, of the maneuver. Maybe this one probably it had these, the sound is more defined for that than it maybe it was for the three. So they included that as a layer. Again, you know, varying, got varying lengths and that sort of thing. And they're all, you know, pretty unique in their own ways. Um, Oh, I didn't play the the flyby, so I can play that here. These are basically recorded from a distance. So if you have maybe a drone or things like that, like as uh, background objects flying by, you could incorporate these uh, as a way to kind of make that immersive. So really cool Doppler effect kind of thing. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, always good design material for pretty much any any type of uh, like whoosh. You could take these and, you know, 
get really creative with how you might use them in something totally different. So uh, let's hear this one looks kind of different. Cool. Man, and the stereo on this is just uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, now we know for sure, right? The stereo is is working. It's always That's good. a question. It sounds great over here. Yeah. So I just jumped over to seven. So let's see if there's anything, anything change from five to seven. Looks like we have the same sort of layers that were in three. So there's no acceleration layer for this one. But see the maneuvers. I've been using. Uh, I think if you're, you know, if you're opening this collection up for the first time yourself and you want to quickly gauge the overall sound, the maneuvers are a pretty good place. Like just listen to all the maneuvers and you'll have a good feel of what each one is um, generally sounding like. And here's some of the stop sounds. So again, bigger and sort of beefier sounding than the the smaller two so far. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, let's hear the stop. Oh, no, I did the stop. What about the, go to the starts? Cool. I'm kind of digging the pass bys too. Give me one of those. Yeah, yeah. Now that we're into those, I am just, uh, I love the way that plays across the stereo field. Yeah, and this one, it looks like um, it's broken them out into slow and fast. So okay. bigger quadcopter has more options in terms of speed. And then here's the, that was actually the slow one. So here's the fast for context. Cool. I'm hearing spaceship layers in there. I'm hearing just a lot of great opportunity to get creative with sound design as part of an ensemble uh, element. So yeah, just a lot of, a lot of potential there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's like, uh, it's hard to not open this and want to immediately start <laughs> like making <laughs> something out of it. It's yeah. one of those. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Uh, maneuver. Uh, we're in the, the quadcopter eight inch. So we have that acceleration again. Maybe we'll start with that just to see. And some maneuvers. And flybys. And again, uh, as we move up the scale in terms of size, this one also has, since again, bigger, it's going to be much louder um, in context out like recording. So they actually have some distant flybys. So these are from further away. So this is giving me like speeder bike type of vibes or something. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Totally. Totally, yeah. that's great. Uh, let's see, anything else for this one? I, I'm now, you know, we're, we're hearing all of the different sizes and each one is so unique, right? Because you take the propeller, you take the, the, uh, the motor that's running the propeller and I'm just, in my head, I'm like, oh, so each of these copters is a four voice synthesizer, right? That's dynamically granularizing uh, these four different, you know, pitched 
uh, drones that are modulating based on different physical properties. Anyway, this is where my head goes. And I love that as this abstraction where now you just apply it where it makes sense to extend whatever creativity you're trying to accomplish. Uh, such a rich collection. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I, I mean, I didn't expect it to be like one of my favorite so far when it was coming out i don't yeah. i don't know i just thought oh okay quadcopters but um yeah this is really cool and it's nice to have uh such a focused collection on something that's just really well executed so super inspiring stuff cool and then uh I, so i switched over to the nine inch project and um as you know maybe you'd hope there's even more range of detail for the largest one so um, this one has another loop in it that's not a, yeah, this arming loop here, which I don't believe, yeah, I don't think this is in any of the other ones. So the arming loop, I assume, um, and I didn't look up the, the actual model of the of the quadcopters they used, but this is probably like when it's still sitting on the ground type of thing before it takes mm -hmm. off. So here's that arming loop. Right. Got it. So that's cool. Additional sort of loop. You could probably use that for the other ones if you had to pitch it up or something. If you felt like you wanted to add that context somewhere else. I was hearing uh, laser fence in that. I don't know about you, but like uh again, force yeah. field, like who knows? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh start engine. So they uh make an interesting distinction in between this one and the other ones where others they just have it labeled as start this one is labeled start engine which i think it's a it's a small thing but i think it's a nice detail to say hey this one's engine kind of adds sort of some kind of when you read it that way it adds in uh, like an expected sort of intensity i guess so uh play that uh, there's a longer one and then we have the acceleration or the uh, lift lift off sound isolated and this one is uh, i think i am pretty sure this is the only one in the collections that actually they do have sort of two layers that are part of the sound or you have some individual control over cool so the uh lift off and the acceleration boost kind of go together so i'll I can solo those out, but we'll hear it together first. So this little boost on its own. And then nice. this by itself. And I don't think, I don't think there's any, yeah, there's no interplay between the two. You know, you maybe you could um, take from the example of these additional layers and maybe you could, you know, play with some ducking on, on this section as well. It would be a in interesting option. Um, and then the hover loop. Bring, and in then, the, bring in the bees again for me on that yeah, hover let's do loop. that. Because I... I I was digging that. Let's yeah, let me open up the send to make sure. So there we go. There's oh, some yeah. uh, interesting B sounds. Uh, I could play all day with that. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And it's, yeah, to mention again, the, the macro is already being set up. You don't even have to get into these individual. It's a nice, it gives you a nice, easy introduction to what is essentially a very overwhelming um, plugin in sure. Rage. Sure. So uh, 
even in that sense, if you're looking to learn Enrage, they give you uh, great ideas and great preset sort of things you can uh, mess around with. Uh, totally. So or imagine dropping your own content on that track and feeding it through that preset of Enrage uh, macros. Like, who knows what will happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'd be easy to build onto it, too. All you have to do is add another track. It's all the routing is already done within yeah. the um, within this basic layer up top. So nice. pull your material in and you're good to go. <sighs> Uh, the landing sounds are pretty cool. We'll play those, at least a couple of them. And here's another one. The, the, long, the longer ones. Yeah, I sh yeah, let me turn that off. <laughs> Awesome. And what about stop engine? So there's the start and the stop. It's both pretty cool. So again, this is a cool layer here that's uh, pretty different than the other ones. It's, you know, if you need a short stopping sound for the end of your loop or something, you could probably work this into any of them if you wanted to. So, and that's probably why if I had to, if I'm guessing they don't, they didn't put this in every single one. Maybe the other ones didn't really have that characteristic as strongly. And they, you know, again, keeping things concise and um, not over extrapolating material like this could work in any of them, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, and then I think the distant flybys in this one are pretty cool since it's the biggest and loudest one. The fast flyby. This is like the kind of stuff that I just want to toss into a sampler and just, you know, <laughs> uh, get my get my hands all over a keyboard and just see see what comes out with it in sure. there. Totally. Uh, so. I think let's see if there's anything else in here. We listen to I think all the mo all the unique stuff. Um, anything else we want to hear before I'll, I'll flip over and look at how uh, how I implemented some of these and see how they can be useful in that light. Got a got a comment coming in from the chat. I love the proximity of these assets. It really sounds dangerous. Uh, like the propeller is right next to your head. Yeah, I know. It's like uh, <laughs> they probably had to put the microphones in harm's way to get some of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is a cool collection. Thanks for that comment. Yeah. Uh, and again, so clean. Uh, where is that microphone? Yeah, right on top of it no uh no sound recorders were harmed during the creation of this collection <laughs> yeah i'll i'll, I'll endorse that <laughs> <laughs> nice nice all right we're flipping over to the y side of things so you've taken uh assets from this collection uh got them into wise and prepped them for uh, the implementation over in the Unreal side of things. Uh, tell us about what's going on here. Yeah. So I guess quickly to go over, you know, some of these events. Um, and I'll also mention that these are the, um, I set all this up with the nine inch quadcopters. So that's explicitly what I used for this example. Um, so I have an event for the armed loop, uh, the hover loop, the landing, liftoff, maneuvers, and then the start and stop engine, which I actually don't think, I don't know if I actually used these two events or not. I think they were um, in the context of how the project was set up. I don't, I think it just, it wasn't, um, I already had the landing and the liftoff and uh, I didn't end up, I don't know if I ended up using these or not. I can't remember. All right. But uh, in any case, um, 
have all the events for, you know, the different actions that we would kind of expect. And let me see, there's a couple interesting things probably worth noting in the events. Um, you find liftoff, landing. Uh, Starting and stopping some loops in there. Yeah. And so yeah, so when the uh, when it lands, I have it set up that it'll stop, you know, your hover loop. And then the start, I thought I had that set up to start. Maybe I'm not looking at the right event here. Maybe I didn't open it up. Lift off. That's that should be it. Uh, huh. I know it's in one of these one of these events. I thought I had set up. To, in any case, I know it works. But yeah, yeah. There's um, it'll it'll start the loop whenever you take off. So. Um, let's. Let, I'll, I'm gonna flip over to Unreal just so we can hear the whole thing, what it sounds like, and then there's some other interesting interplay I have going on because you remember in the Reaper projects, you know, you have that ducking track working for you, but I didn't, you know, have that set up automatically when you put things over to Y. So I did some things there to get that effect. So okay, and you've up. got those events wired in uh, across different actions uh in blueprints as well as in some animations um or so it... it's all in blueprints actually got it okay um so yeah this actually this one this project that i'm using didn't actually operate off of animations that just was uh basically manipulating the individual propellers and got things it. so it's a little bit different but kind of makes it interesting cool so I have control over it now, and I'll do the uh, takeoff. So takeoff found triggered, and now we hear the loop. And you'll notice when I move, you can't see me moving my mouse, but when I move my mouse side to side, you get some pitch and volume interaction going on. As I move around, it'll do the same thing. And then if I bring it down, So the blades don't match the uh, the sound, but that's just um, you know there was some some weird stuff going on in the blueprints that I wasn't able to quite work out with how to control the the individual blades. Sure. But the sound is hooked up, and you can imagine what it would be like if the blades were slowing down appropriately. Cool, um, cool. And you've got that positioned on the object, so as it's flying around, uh, yes, you've got a kind of a third person view here so you're always kind of chasing the sound of it uh as it is now right uh, um great i thought i actually thought about um doing something I, I was considering you know the individual blades on the prop and if i should you know position a sound for each blade mm. um i did try i tried some stuff out with that and actually ended up liking the result better of just using the stereo recordings as they were yeah uh there's probably something there but you know um without tweaking it too much this just sounded better um yeah. and it was easier so whenever something's easier and it sounds better sometimes that's the winning formula perfect yep totally so, so how are you handling the uh the ducking of the loop with the you know turning or or um pivoting of the copter yeah let's take a look at that so i'll pull up the blueprint first just to see well, we'll try to you know make sense of this as much as you can make sense of a blueprint that you've never seen before but uh so we have the input axes for the quadcopters movement and they're going to control um i created a um a parameter a game parameter for velocity Got it. So there's my game parameter. Uh, there's some interesting things here that I played around with, you know, the uh, the mode of interpolation. So I have it using the filtering over time. 
And uh, so what it's going to do is the mo the movement, the velocity of the input axes for whichever direction will change that, uh, they'll alter that, the, that, that value. And then we're going to use that to drive the pitch and volume of both the loop and the individual maneuvers in slightly different ways. And also that's connected to the, the posting the event for the maneuvers and the uh, the loop wherever that action is in here. But they look essentially the same anyway. Sure, sure. Um, there's some other things in here. I have it set so that, you know, the parameter has to be above um, a certain number for it to actually communicate the or to start, you know, transmitting the uh, the value. Yep. So a threshold. Yeah. But if I go in, um, let's see, I think I have, here it is. So the hover loop, you can see here are my two RTPCs, so the pitch and volume. So for the hover, um, as the velocity increases, it's going to turn the volume down. And Got that's it. obviously what we want. If we're going to have the maneuver sounds playing, you want the you want to have some control over over that and the pitch it will go up you know when it moves um moves differently cool yeah. so maybe the thing to do here is i'll solo i'm going to solo the loop and then i'll solo the maneuvers so hover loop i'll solo that and i go back in and play All right, so now we're just only going to hear that hover sound. And you can hear that ducking as I move it around. In fact, if I wanted to, uh, you know, accentuate it a little bit, just for the sake of, you know, what's going on. Right. And that's compelling too. Yeah. And it, uh, again, because I'm using my mouse to turn the camera and it's actually, it feels really, res it feels really responsive and it, it feels really immersive when you're actually moving this thing around. So, uh, I'll go back over here and let's um, I'll start over from the start the level over afterwards. If I go back to my session and I'll solo the um, the maneuvers. So the maneuvers, they have the opposite sort of thing going on where the voice volume is going to go up uh, whenever you're moving around so that Basically, it'll, it'll recreate that similar sort of ducking feature we had. Um, although I one thing I was kind of playing with is doing some weird sort of I did some weird um, point automation points on these RTPCs, and you can there was a lot of interesting sort of tonality I was able to get just by you know you can imagine maybe if there are different states of these quadcopters, maybe it's damaged. You could have the you know you could play with these Ooh, yeah. parameter points so there's a there's i generated a lot of ideas but uh, keeping it simple for just showing off the uh the functionality for now so here's the uh the maneuvers soloed go back into play mode now you don't hear anything yet but when i turn perfect yeah Right. So the automation on these was really helpful, uh, especially getting it to where that where it actually cuts out. That was something that I had to kind of tinker with a, quite a bit because, you know, they they're going to stand out, uh, especially the, whenever the actual maneuver ends the file length. So getting that ending point to not stand out was uh, some 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 things I had to to, to tune with a bit. But um, let's 
hear it all again together. You can see. Pretty seamless. Yeah. And if you want, maybe we can, uh, I'll increase the volume of the maneuvers just for heck of it. Oh yeah. And then I'll show you what I was talking about here. If I increase this a bit, you see they tend to stand out quite a bit more. So you get it natural, that's why I have that the way it's automated. Yeah, I like it. And there's the land. Excellent work, Chase. Like yeah. that's a fantastic example of a really dynamic feeling quadcopter experience. You really have it tied in there, uh, responsive and reactive. Uh, really cool. Uh, I'm imagining extending that. You know, um, you know, getting the direction of the controller. You know, are you? shifting to the left or are you shifting to the right uh using oh, yeah. that using another game parameter to change the pan uh, i'd love to have like the pan of that swing left and right as you're navigating there uh to reinforce the directionality of your turn as well yeah yeah that was uh that was an idea to, that i had um but just, I didn't quite have time no, to no, no. put that in. Uh, again, <laughs> no, just, yeah, there's a, a lot point. of great opportunity there to continue fleshing out the simulation side of it. And then I just imagine, uh, you know, spawning uh, a dozen of them and letting them uh, randomly fly around in circles. Uh, it would be a wild performance art piece. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, other, the other thing um, I thought about was obviously having additional additional layers or additional containers for uh versions with the the b sounds or setting up Ooh. like a switch maybe yeah or um you know with the distortion there's plenty of uh material to play around with that easily lends itself to you know both linear and non-linear yeah. workflows and um I, I guess i don't know one of my one of my concerns sometimes with vehicle libraries is how well if i'm using it for a game is this really gonna is this collection of this library really going to work out for what I need it to do in yeah. terms of, am I going to have to go in and edit a bunch of stuff to get it to fit? So again, it's a good moment to reinforce um, that, you know, all these collections are, they're going to be easily used for linear anyway, but that added um, thought and care taken into making sure that all I had to do was basically, you know, um, transfer these sounds in and I didn't have to I didn't have to toy around with a bunch of different things just to get it working inside the game. So a yeah. uh, good example of how that all comes together with with Strata. Totally, totally. And uh again, throwing in the dynamic capabilities of Wise uh just results in something that feels ready to uh ready to play. Yeah. Cool. I would say, you know, uh, for me, especially, you know, when I started, um, you know, working on Strata, it, I had to refresh myself a lot on a different, a lot of different wise and uh, unreal things. And having Strata, it really enabled me to actually sit down and learn the other tools properly. Cause I had, if you don't have material to plug in, yeah, then it's, you know, it's, it can be a struggle just to get, um, get yourself up to speed with the different concepts and some of these uh, some of these things you can do in Wise. So it goes hand in hand. If you're trying to teach somebody Wise, um, Strata is going to allow you to do that uh, super effectively, and you're going to get so much more out of the experimentation of possibilities that are there. Totally. Ah, oh, 
great, great overview. Uh, well, should we tie it up with the bow? Yeah, I think uh, I think I think I said everything I need to say about quadcopters. I like it. So, just to recap, Strata, a collection of multi-track sound libraries, uh, over forty out there right now. They the subscription comes with the Enrage plugin, uh, Wise plugins to use over in your DAW, and the IEM suite of plugins. Uh, that are part of all of the Strata Reaper projects. Uh, we've got integrations now to get your sounds back and forth between Wise and Reaper. We also have a Soundly integration, a Sound Miner, and a Bass Head integration. Uh, we're onboarding new partners. Uh, we've been working with the folks at Boom for the last year, and we'll continue to do so. Uh, meanwhile, adding in these little uh, unique contributions from other partners that we have planned throughout the year. We've got a bunch of new subscription options that I'll give you a quick overview on. And like I said, a growing number of collections out there for you to grab and get started with. Uh, we also have these new subscription models. So we've got the uh, single project subscriptions, the duet, uh, the quartet, and the orchestra, depending on the number of users, um, you know, changing prices for a single project. We also have the any number of project, uh, professional, uh, subscription as well as the recently introduced student subscription. So imagine yourself as a student of sound using Reaper to just uh, ignite your education with all of the great content, uh, sound design fundamentals, along with you know, how things are organized, how things are named. Like there's just a master class in the collections to help understand the creation of sounds in the context of uh, real projects uh, designed from the ground up to be interactive for games and applicable in linear. Uh, so jump over to audiokinetic.com. We've got uh, the Strata uh, website available for you over there. You can get free samples immediately. We've got sample pack one and two available for you to download right away. And you can use those in your projects uh, right now. Uh, there's a ton there to dig into and apply immediately to whatever you're working on. Uh, get signed up. Uh, for Strata News through the Audio Kinetic customer portal. And if this was fun, dig back into the series of Strata hands-on live streams that Chase and I have been doing over the last months. Uh, cool things like the physics collection, uh, a bunch of ambiences, spaceships, creatures. Uh, and Chase does a great job of, you know, walking us through the strata side, uh, as well as these demonstrations in Unreal. Excellent work, Chase. Thank you. Uh, if these kinds of live streams are fun for you, we've got a fun one coming up in the beginning of March uh, that will be getting started with game audio using WISE. So we're going to talk through some of the educational resources uh, and, and really just how to begin your path in interactive audio. So tune in for that one on March 6th. Uh, we'll also have a deep dive into mixing Baldur's Gate 3 with WISE. Uh, the developers from Lariant will be joining us to go under the hood with their WISE project and talk about mixing Baldur's Gate 3. This is a game that is gigantic. Uh, and so 
come learn how to approach the mix for a game which is so systemic and uh, driven by narrative storytelling. And don't forget about the AK blog. I mentioned the quadcopters blog that, uh, that will give you additional insight into today's collection, but we also uh, dropped a blog from some folks at Sony talking about mastering a game with WISE, uh, approaching audio mastering in your game, uh, some different techniques and strategies alongside the mastering suite that is available uh, for free as part of the mastering chain uh, in WISE. So, yeah, dig into all of those cool things, and we hope to see you in the future for uh, additional li live streams uh, together. Chase, yep. uh, so great. So great to have your experience and expertise here walking us through this new collection. Yeah, um, always fun. And uh, I'm glad that I each, each time have something interesting that I uh, have to show. So I'm glad to do it. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, so will you, are you buying a quadcopter? You got like a flock of quadcopters in the garage or anything? Uh, no, I don't, I don't no. have one. And um, I've had this idea though, for a while of having a quadcopter and using it to like drop a recording rig somewhere. So, but I haven't been able to justify the expense of buying one for, for just that experiment. But, so like uh you're gonna fly it up into the middle of the swamp set it down it's gonna magically press record on the on the recorder for you and then yeah an yeah, hour a later you can fly it out and with a with an awesome pristine field recording yeah it's an idea um, all right i like it maybe maybe someday i'll own one for for that but uh, <laughs> in my experience a lot of people buy quadcopters and never use them yeah yeah but well, yeah you don't have to buy one because you have the recordings so <laughs> there it was done and done man all right thanks so much for your time thanks to folks who tuned in uh great to see you today in the chat and uh see you next time cool all right see ya. take care